everyone, it's the Grim Lord here, and this is Grim's Comics Corner with the Sandman. You guys may have already watched uh, the Netflix adaptation, which, although woke, had some interest. I mean, it was very well done. Um, it's hard for me to say, because usually things that are woke could go to shit, but this time it didn't. And uh, I followed the material very, very well, and we're going to continue. And, uh, well, not going to continue, but we're going to start with the original source material, which is captured here in the Sandman, the Deluxe Edition. So let's go ahead and get started. Look at that, John Constantine. Deluxe Edition, Book 1. This is Preludes and Nocturnes, which I have a copy of sitting in my little comic case. Okay, some thanks before we get started. Wake up, sir. We're here. Which cross, England? Already? I must have dozed off. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Hathaway, Dr. John Hathaway. Uh, can I, uh, is Mr. Burgess available? The master's in his study, sir. Please follow me. Dr. Hathaway, what an unexpected pleasure. Please take a seat. Compton, some tea for our guest? So I take it that you have reconsidered. After our meeting at the museum, I, I know what I said, but my son Edmund, I got a telegram this morning. His destroyer was sunk last week off Jutland. He's dead. I brought you the book. I had to. If what you were telling me was true, and it is true, isn't it, about death? Quite true, Dr. Hathaway. The Magdalen Grimoire was all that that order needed. We can hold the ceremony at the next full moon, and then no one ever need die again. June 10th, 1916. Toronto, Canada. Ellie Marston listens to her bedtime story. She knows it is only meant to entertain her. Said Tweedledum, when you're only one of the things in, this, in his dream, you know very well you're not real. It terrifies her. Kingston, Jamaica. In his, father's, in his father's inn, Daniel Bustamante sleeps. The shouts and songs of drunken adults do not shake his slumber. He dreams of a castle in the air above the blue mountains, a castle made of clouds. Verdun, France. Stefan Wasserman goes over the top again. As soon as it's dark, he never dreamt it would be like this. Nobody told him. He lied about his age to enlist. He's almost 14. London, England. Unity Kikade tosses between linen sheets. She dreams of a tall, dark man. His eyes burn like twin stars in her head. She mutters and whimpers, lost in a world beyond her understanding. Unity dreams. Witch Cross, England. Roderick Burgess's waking dreams are of the power and the glory. And of death, of course. Especially death. It's midnight. It's time. After tonight, I'd like to see Alistair and his friends try to make fun of me. They will make no more jokes, Alex, when death is at my command. And I have the Magdalen Grimoire, poor Professor Hathaway. Even if we fail tonight, my son, Hathaway gave us the book. Time. Uh, no one has even attempted what we will achieve tonight, Alex, to summon and imprison death. This will be a triumph for the Order, eh, Alex? Yes, Father. Father? Magus. She'll be... Okay, this is really odd the way they have this set up. Oh, okay, yeah, I got it. I see. It was set up like the U. Sometimes it's hard to read them like that, guys. It's like, poor old fool. He'll be in our sway forever. The Royal Museum will be ours to plunder. And I have the Magdalene Grimoire. Poor Professor Hathaway. Even if we fail tonight, my son, Hathaway gave us the book. After tonight, I'd like to see Alistair and his friends, they're talking about Crowley, uh, try to make fun of me. They will, n they will make no more jokes, Alex, when death is at my command. Everything is ready for the ceremony, Magus. Good. To your places, then. Let us begin. For a moment, Roderick Burgess is scared. He thinks of the effrontery of his action. To capture death, to bind the Reaper. For a moment, he hesitates, but only for a moment. I give you a coin I made from stone. I give you a song I stole from the dirt. 
I give you a knife from under the hills and a stick that I stuck to a dead man's eye. I give you a claw that I ripped from a rat. I give you a name and the name is lost. I give you the blood from out of my vein and a feather I pulled from an angel's wing. The words of the spell toll inside his head. Burgess realizes that he couldn't stop now, not even if he wanted to. I call you with names, O oh my lord, O oh my lord. I summon with poison and summon with pain. And I open the way and I open the gates. Come, 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 come. Boy, it's like a damn hentai thing over here. I summon you in the names of the old lords. Namtar, Alatu, Morax, Nabarius, Klesh, Vepar, Maimon. We summon. They're, you know, coming. Ashramadeva calls you. Mabaram calls you. Harvendile calls you. From the dark they call you. Into the dark they call you. Coin and song and knife and stick. Here in the darkness. Here in the darkness. Here in the darkness. Here in the darkness. Claw and name. Blood and feather. Here in the darkness. We summon you together. Come! Sleep of the just. We did it. I don't believe we did it. No, we failed. This isn't death. Damn it to hell. Even so, I think at the end of the day, this will have been a very profitable evening's work. Ellie, Ellie, drat the girl. Can you believe it, Arthur? She's fallen asleep again. Her father carried her to bed. She never woke up. Daniel Bustamante returns to his best dream. And then the clouds aren't there at all. But this time the clouds are frimsy, frail, less real. Okay, so originally she was white, but her father was black. They just made them all black in the Netflix adaptation. Too scared to sleep, he sobs to keep himself awake until dawn. Stefan's case is new to the doctors. They thought they'd seen every form of shell shock. How long can a boy go without sleeping? When do the nightmares sneak out into the daylight? The morphine is proving useless. It's sad. Stefan Wasserman went over the top. Unity Kincaid finds it harder and harder to stay awake. She now sleeps for almost 20 hours a day. She used to dream, to shift in her sleep, muttering and sighing, locked in half-remembered fantasies. Now she lies unmoving, breath shallow and silent, lost to the world. Unity sleeps. Trapped. Observe. Welcome. As you see, the circle traps you in corporate... In corpor in corporally... There we go. In corporally. The crystal cell imprisons your material aspect. You won't get out unless the circle is broken. And the circle will not be broken unless I order it. We will discuss the conditions of your release. Let me make sure that, yeah, we're recording. Threats. Patience. June 1920. The Great War, two years in the past. An overdue stock taking war. An overdue stock taking reveals the loss of books and manuscripts in the Royal Museum. Professor John Hathaway, senior curator, comes under suspicion. You're a bastard, Roderick Burgess, and I was a fool. I was a fool to think you could replace Edmund. I was a fool to, to have given you that damn book. You've bled me dry, but you can't blackmail me any longer. I've written a suicide note. To my shame, I know it's too. I know too much about you. It's all there. All I know. If you're lucky, they'll only hang you. You'll ruin no more lives. And I cannot bear my life any longer. Damn you to hell, Burgess. And alas, I'm certain you will meet me there. Confession. I, John Hathaway, wishing to die peacefully. Here state that the true... Okay. Fool. Professor Hathaway's use of a museum artifact in his suicide was confirmed speculation that he was mentally unbalanced. No suicide note was found. Curator's mystery suicide police baffled. At the inquest, accusations were made linking Hathaway to Roger Burgess, the Lord Magus, and his Order of Ancient Mysteries. Nothing could be proven. The self-styled Demon King refused to comment. Scandal rocks the cult community. Demon King cleared due to lack of evidence. The figure was alleged to be at the center of the scandal involving the bizarre suicide of museum cur curator John Hathaway is Roderick Burgess, born Morris Burgess, Brock Brocklesby, and Preston Lancashire in 1872. During the turn of the century, Mr. Burgess used his considerable inherited industrial wealth to set up his mystical organization, the Order of Ancient Mysteries, based in Fawny Rig, a Sussex Manor house. 
1916, Mr. Burgess announced widely in occult circles that he would that he would raise and imprison death, proving himself as the greatest magician of his day. Whatever the truth of what occurred in Rich Cross in 1916, and it is doubtful anyone will ever know for sure, one thing is certain. It was a significant turning uh, point for Burgess in his order of ancient mysteries. Mr. Burgess' efforts to win himself in the early years of the century. Okay, we don't get too much of that. We get tragedies of sleepy sickness and warped minds and broken bodies. The sleepy sickness, as it was called, continued to spread. People fell asleep and did not wake up. They lived their lives like sleepwalkers, eating a fed, sometimes talking nonsense, dream stuff, psychic residue from the World War, some suggested. Others, doctors and scientists, more sensibly attributed it to a, attributed, yeah, attributed it to a virus. Unable to sleep, Stephen Wasserman killed himself a year after his discharge from the army. He was 16. August 1926. Bugger and blast him. I know he understands me. Ten years in that goldfish bowl and he hasn't said a word. Just stares at me with those creepy eyes of his. He hates us. Uh, Father Magus, I found something that may cast some light on our guests. And the Paginarum Fulvarum. Here, look at this picture. Hmm, yes indeed. Why do you think I ordered that none of the guards were to sleep? He had to be one of the endless, so which one? Not death, we knew that. Destiny then? Desire? Dream was the only one that fitted the bill. Here is laid the king of dreams. I was hoping you'd work it out on your own one day, though, and you have. Well done, Alex. I know that the order will be safe in your hands. If ever I forsake the material plane, heh. <laughs> and Mr. Sykes? Indubitably, Magus. November 1930. A schism brings chaos to the order. Rusen Sykes, second in command of the Order of Ancient Mysteries, disappears. In company with Ethel Cripps, the Magus's mistress. They take with them many of the Order's treasures and over $200,000 in cash. Magical war is declared. San Francisco, December 1930. I beg protection, Lord. Protections comes, dear mortal. The things you offers is paltry trifles. Have you nothing else? Perhaps this helmet, sire? Ah, yes, for this I would give you what you asked. So splendid. This amulet will make safe from any from oh, make safe from any things. Okay. Which cross, England? Purr. That's a cat, of course. Uh, as this blood is shed, so spells your blood. Ruth and Sykes, adept of the thirty-third, whose secret name is Arita, traitor, an oathbreaker. The ritual proved useless. Again, he has protection. Verminous oaf. What about our uh, prisoner? Couldn't we make him do something to Sykes? We can't make him do anything, Alex. All we can do is keep him there and hope. We could try to raise death again. Cretan. We can get Sykes if we just keep trying. And in 1936, she walked out on him. She took the demon's gift with her. Yes. No. Oh, God, no. While he, opened, while he owned the amulet, it kept him safe. When he still possessed it, it was worth everything. July 1939. Ellie Marston is, a chair, is in a charity ward. She's still asleep. She's woken twice in the last decade. Each time she cried for her mother, she still thinks she is eight. Daniel Bustamante was one of the last people to succumb to the sleepy sickness. End of 1926. He's now been asleep for 13 years. His wife and children miss him. Unity Kincaid was raped seven years ago. She gave birth to a baby girl. The scandal was hushed up. The baby was adopted. Unity never knew. She slept through the whole thing. The universe knows someone is missing, and it slowly and slowly it attempts to replace him. Wesley Dodd's nightmares have stopped since he started going out at night. He puts evil people to sleep with gas and sprinkles sand on them, leaves them for the police to find in the morning. The idea came to him in his sleep. He doesn't dream about the man in the strange helmet anymore. No more burning eyes. Everything's all right. Wesley Dodd sleeps the sleep of the just. 1947. Father, do you think this is wise at your age? My age? Don't be so bloody insolent. Open the damn door. You, it's your fault, damn you. You aren't deaf, but you live forever. You haven't aged a day since we caught you. You could have given me power beyond my wildest dreams. I, I, I didn't have to get so old. I shouldn't have had to get old. Watch my captor grow old and die. No satisfaction. Oh, oh, he says, watch my captor grow old and die. No satisfaction. Still here. Waiting. 1955. He died. Not dead, only sleeping, it says. Ellie Marston is diagnosed as suffering from encephalitis lethargica. She now wakes four or five times a year. 
Daniel Bustamante is awake much of the time. He doesn't speak, though. The superstitious say he's a zombie, a walking dead man. He wants someone to read her a story. If he spoke, he might agree with him. Something died inside him a long time ago. A castle made of clouds. When her parents died, the family executors, uh, executors, well, executors, whatever, uh, had Unity Kincaid put into a nursing home. They have to explain where she is to her every time she wakes. She never remembers. Around her, the elderly wait for death as they wait for an old friend, killing time. Alex, darling, I still don't understand why you keep him down there. What else can I do? But what if the police found out? It's kidnapping. Don't be foolish, Paul. I've told you. He's been down there for 40 years without eating, without sleeping. I don't think he can even breathe in that glass cage. He's a being of unknowable power, so what do I do? Say, sorry, it was all father's fault. Look me up the next time you're incarcerated on the physical plane. The order isn't just a way to make money and get laid, Paul. Some of it's for real. I've seen stuff you'd never believe. Things that still scare me. Nightmare things. We're safer just leaving him down there. I'll be dead long before he ever gets out. It'll be somebody else's problem. If you say so, you've been around a lot longer than I have. Fancy a game of tennis? Not now. Sorry. I'm too tired. Hello? You don't have to be in there, you know. The deal's still the same one that my, mo my father offered you. Power. Immortality. I promise that you won't seek revenge. Well, I know you can understand me. Say something! No. 1968, they come to him seeking enlightenment. Alexander Burgess tells him of Kundalini Yoga, Tantric Sex, astra Astral Travel. Nothing important. He forbids them to use psychedelics in the house, worried that the waking dreams could somehow empower his prisoner. He won't let them call him Magus to his face. It's always Alex. Always Alex. Moved to a hospital specializing in encephalitis cases, Ellie continues to sleep. There are many like her, people for whom the sands of time stopped flowing sometime half a century earlier. Daniel sleepwalks unspeaking through his world. He moves slowly like a man wading through quicksand. The nursing home staff pretend that Unity is awake. The, they wheel her from room to room with the other patients. Asleep, she watches television. Asleep, she ri relaxes in the sun. There are two guards in his room at all times. Coffee and amphetamines are freely available. The guards never sleep on duty. He says, do what thou wilt, Buster. So he kind of looks like Alan Moore a little. 1970. The young people have drifted away. Alex hands over the reins of the organization to Paul McGuire, his longtime personal assistant. Paul doesn't believe in magic. He sees the order of ancient mysteries as an efficient method of parting the credulous from their cash. Alex spends most of his time in his study. He wrote a memoir about his father, writes letters to newspapers defending his father's reputation, and is editing a volume of his father's letter letters. One night, he slashed his father's portrait with a knife. Alex would no longer read books on magic, except for one, the Liber Favorum Paginarum. Yeah, we get that right. And he only reads one page of that book. Over and over. 1972. Why won't you talk to me? You could tell us so much, so many things. 1978. I haven't had a decent night's sleep for 60 years. Is that your fault? Is it? 1982. I could uh, torture you, you know. I could. Don't think that I couldn't. I've killed people before now. 1988. I hate you. I'm glad we trapped you. You're nothing special. You know that? You're nothing at all reading it Stephen King a naked man in a glass box that's all you are you're nothing at all soon eh pointless quite pointless take me up to my office Paul I uh, have work to attend to don't I of course you do Alex love of course you do don't humor me Paul I can't stand it when you humor me boy the old man's stroppy today anything happening then Nah, same old rubbish. I don't know why I buy it. Force of habit, I suppose. That and page three. Tug of love baby eaten by cows. And I'll be in Majorca this time next week, so there'll be plenty of the real thing. You know, the kind of Eiffel you'd never get at the beach at Eastbourne. I don't know. I once met this blonde buying a chocolate ice. Ernie sees any conversation as an invitation to concoct tales about his sexual prowess. Frederick no longer listens. He's thinking about his holiday. And then the Spanish beach becomes a tropical paradise. It begins. Straight out of a holiday brochure. Sun. Sea. Sand. 
and surf and and thud oh Christ what was that look at him you don't think he's dead I don't know what to think what the hell do we do now they won't think it's our fault well they we didn't do nothing wait here I'll get McGuire dead I bet he's dead how long's he been like this uh, I suppose I suppose we ought to take a look at him he's never done anything like this before hell click Puff. Amazing art. Uh, uh, what happened? Where did he go? Home. It feels so good to be back. I left a monarch, yet I return naked, alone, hungry. Weakened, I clutch a passing dream. First, food. In Mort Notkin's recurring dream, he goes to this swell party, but he's dressed as a clown. He thought it was a costume party. He didn't know. Everyone laughs at him. Marilyn, Elvis, even the Duke. Weird, that's the first time a naked man has ever turned up to raid the buffet. Dreams. Go figure them. Then Ron and Nancy turn up and Mort's back on familiar ground. There's the colonel. It's like a frog leg. My first food in 70 years. I'm so hungry I don't even taste it. First food, then clothing. I am weak, lacking my tools, still. I imagine the texture of fabric against my skin, sculpted from dream space, and it's been so long. There. That's two of the three. I have food and raiment. I need the tools stolen from me from my, by my former captor. He will give them to me. And he will give me the other thing I crave. Revenge. And all over the world, they begin to wake up. Why, you're... Only a sort of thing in his dream. If that were, if that were King, if that there King was to wake, added Tweedledum, you'd go out. Bang! Just like a candle. You look at this man, he's crazy. He just sits there all day. He can't talk, he's crazy. Nope, not anymore. And in the nursing home garden, Unity Kincaid comes to herself again. My baby? I dreamed I had a baby. I uh, need to talk about Alex. I need to talk to Alex, rather. Something's come up, something important. I'm afraid you'll have to wait, Mr. McGuire. He's having a nap. Meow. Hello? You aren't talking. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Well, that would have been great. I don't even think he did that in the uh, adaptation. You, it's you. That's right. It's me. I'm God. I, I, I'm God. I'm sorry. It, it wasn't me. My father, he did it. I never knew. I wouldn't have. I'm sorry. I didn't. Shh. Enough. There are offenses that are unpardonable. Can you have any idea what it was like? Can you have any idea? Confined in a glass box for three score years and ten. A human lifetime. Time moves no faster for my kind than it does for humanity, and in prison it crawled at a snail's pace. I was, I am, the lord of this realm of dream and nightmare. You, your father, piped me down with his petty hedge magicking, his two-penny spell. Me. You did that to me. You barred me from my realm with your foolish circle. You threatened, cajoled, and pleaded for gifts that are neither mankind's to receive nor mine to give. You had no thought for the harm you must have brought to your world. Lord, what fools these, mor these mortals be. Well, have you no excuse? No explanation? Some reason I should not take reprisal? We didn't want you. It was all a mistake. We, were trying we weren't trying to capture you. We wanted to capture death. What? You wanted death? Then count yourself lucky for the sake of your species and your petty planet that you did not succeed. That instead, you snared Death's younger brother. Sorry? You'll never know how lucky you were. Where are my tools? A pouch, a helm, and a ruby. Your people stole them from me. Where are they? I don't know. That was part of the stuff Sykes pinched 50 years ago. We never saw any of it again. I see. So your punishment, then. I will grant you a gift to reward you for your years of hospitality. I give you this. Eternal waking. Uh, no! Are you alright? Yes, uh, I'm sorry, I must have had a nightmare. 
I dreamed that our prisoner had escaped in this tower. He was, he said, he has, he did. He's out, Alex. He checked out this morning. Keep away from me. Now then, Mr. Burgess, calm down. You've had a bad dream, that's all. No point getting all worked up about it. God, oh God, it was ter terrifying. So real. Uh, have you ever had one of those dreams, you know, where you think you've woken up, but you haven't? It's just part of the nightmare, and you're still in it? I can't say I have, dear, but you know what? Wow. Holy crap. I don't even remember that. I think you're going to be having quite a lot of them from now on. <laughs> it was more tiring than I had expected, but he will never return to the life he knew. He is the nightmare everlasting, eternal waking. How long has he been like this? He's only been asleep a few minutes, if that's what you mean. Funny, he's normally such a light sleeper. So, no, no, please. And I have showed him fear. Alex, Alex, it's me, Paul. Come on, Alex. Come on, old fellow. Me and Nurse Edmonds. We're here, so it's all right. So wake up. Please wake up. Please? Amazing covers. Don't be moron. Don't be a moronic lump of blubbering, quaking, pathetic lard. Open the box. Unwrap it. Uh, but but it isn't my birthday. Of course it isn't your birthday, Powder Brain. You don't have a birthday. Um, no, I uh, don't, do I? Now, why would I give you an exploding present? What kind of a brother would I be if I did that? You you promise it isn't gonna explode? Promise? My kind of a brother. The, uh, the kind who kills me whenever he's, uh, mad at me or bored or just in a lousy mood. <laughs> Let's let, uh, fraternal bygones be bygones, eh, Pudgy? Now, just open your blasted present. But don't thunk, thunk, what was that? I, uh, I think it's someone at the door. Well, something at the door, anyway. Don't you think we ought to, uh, uh, wait for a while? I, uh, I'm, well, I mean, maybe it'll go away on its own. Who's there? Who is it? It's Gregory. Well, maybe it's r really something pretending to be Gregory. Something big and nasty. Don't be pathetic. Why would something big and nasty pretend to be Gregory? But just to be on the safe side, you can open the door. Now, come to think of it, Gregory is extraordinary big and nasty in his own right anyway. It is Gregory, isn't it? Spit it out, Gully Guts. What is it? It's him, brother. He's back. Y yes, but but I, uh, I, what, uh, 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 the prince of stories. Ugh. Help me, please. Imperfect host. I awake in the darkness too weak to even summon a light. The air is musty, tired, old. It smells of lost dreams and rotten fabric. Where am I? Hello, m m my lord? You, I know you, you're, uh, I'm Abel, my lord, from the mm, first story, the, uh, victim. Yes, I do remember you. I'm sorry, it's been so long. Where are we? This is my brother's house of mystery. Gregory, um, that's Kane's gargoyle. Hmm, he brought you here. He found you in the, uh, shifting zones. Yes, I was on my way to the castle. I, uh, uh I'll, I'll tell Kane you're awake. He's, uh, made you some food. I lay in the bed feeling weaker than I have for eons, remembering. It was a dark and stormy nightmare. Before my imprisonment, I knew the journey would have meant nothing to me. I would not have even, I would not even have needed to travel. But weakened and exhausted, I stumbled through the fringes of the dream time. The dream I used to buy in Burgess and eternal waking used up the last of my strength. And I was far too... Hold on. I had to reach the gates of Horn and Ivory to reach my castle. But the way was hard. And I was far too weak. I do not know how long I remained there. I remember the wind on my face staring down at the dreamscape below me. And then I was here. Ahem. Good evening, your highness, Prince Morpheus. I've made you some food. We'll soon have you back on your feet again. You are Cain, aren't you? That's me, your worship, purveyor of penny dreadfuls, shilling shockers, blood and thunders, and false rate nightmares. Or I was. Things have been strange since you've been gone. Tell me, Cain, do you possess anything of mine? Anything I created? 
Anything of yours? I wouldn't think so. No, no. Uh, yes, you do. Uh, both of us do. Our letters of um, commission, remember? They, uh, they have his signature on them. He m made them. You button burster. You lie down, you low down, spying, peeking, prying, butterfinger. Fetch me these letters. Fetch me anything of mine. I, uh, have a mine on me. I, <clears throat> I uh, have my mine on me, sire, and Kane has his too. Here, t take it. I released something I created before the dawn of time. Reabsorbed that fragment of myself I placed inside it. Now, Kane, your turn. Uh, my, my lord, uh, if it's not a, a foolish question, uh, what my brain dead brother is so specul spectacularly failing to enunciate is this Where have you been for so long, lord? What were you doing? Where have I been? I've been imprisoned. Young man, please do not prevaricate. I wish to see my son, and I wish to see him now. You must understand, Miss Er D. Ethel D. Yes, well, this is most irregular, Miss D. Arkham does not encourage visitors. This is my son, John D. I believe he's imprisoned under the under his nom de crime of Dr. Destiny. A foolish boy. I've been searching for him all for almost a decade. We do have a patient of that name, Miss D, but this is most irregular, and I'm afraid. Hmm, young fellow, I am 90 years of age. I haven't seen my son in 10 years, and I have traveled over 8,000 miles to see him today. And I will see him, or my attorneys will know why. Watch the steps. They can be slippery. I'm flabbergasted. You couldn't bring John up to see me, Mr. Huntoon. It's Doctor. Doctor Huntoon. We can't, we can't risk letting him out. He's too dangerous. He no longer sleeps or dreams in the normal sense of the word. And physically, he's quite debilitated. John, is that you? John, mother. I would have dreamed of you if I could dream. It's been a long time. What have you done to him? What have you done? Mother, you look so old. Things are so strange these days. Mother, they, they took my dreams away from me. Miss D, I'm afraid he's getting overexcited. We should go. Miss D, say goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Uh, 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 I feel I ought to give you some good good advice, and I, uh, I, uh, oh, shut up, sponge wit, can't you? Goodbye, sire. Uh, there he goes. So sh shouldn't we have told him about the castle, about what's happened to the dream time? Why? You'll find out soon enough. You, uh, aren't mad at me, aren't you? Are you? Mad? Why should I be mad? I don't own you, you refugee from a bloody shambles. Now open your present. Beyond, outside my dream world, there is infinite dust, infinite dark. And the dream world is infinite, although it is bounded on every side. The way to the center is a slow spiral. One passes the houses of mystery and secrets, old way stations on the frontiers of nightmare. From there, one charts a course nightward until one reaches the gates of Horn and Ivory. I carved them myself when the world was younger and order was needed. I hastened to the gates. The dreams that pass through the gates of ivory are lies, figments, and deceptions. The other admits the truth. No one guards the horn gate anymore. I remember the way of old. Once through it, I can see my castle. Through it, I will be able to see my home. Lucian? One and the same, my lord. At your service, lord, as always. Get up. Please get up. Lucian, what happened here? What happened? You are the incarnation of the stream time, Lord, and with you gone, the place began to decay, began to crumble. The process was slow at first, my lord. Things in the dream world began to transmute. I was aware of it in my library. Slowly the words began to fade. Sometime after you vanished, my books became bound volumes of blank paper. The next day, the whole library was gone. I never found it again. It breaks your heart, my lord, doesn't it? It's been a strange century for all of us, my lord. The Raven Woman has decayed badly. She lives only in nightmares. Many of the palace servants disperse back into the dream stuff and that formed them. Brute and Glob vanished two score years ago. I do not know where. The fashion thing has been many things. Flapper. Nod. Uh, Flapper. Maud. Punk. She was a mad Madonna witch for a while. Blood and Perrier, goddammit. Last time I saw her, she was the mad yuppie witch. But that was a year ago. I have encountered Cain and Abel already. Ah. Yes, those two. Disturb me. I mean, they've always been weird. But since you've been gone, 
The weirdness has been getting worse. Uh, an egg? Something has gone so wrong, and it's been getting slowly stranger. I've tried not to do it to you so much. Uh, cocaine, uh, sometimes, uh, the egg, it's just not just any egg, you understand. It's beautiful. Hmm, I think I'll call him Irving. Irving? You can't call it Irving. Names for gargoyles always begin with a G, like Gaspacho, or Gormagon, or Gladstone, or Ganymede, or Pro but, but I, I like Irving. I, uh, no, no, please, Kane. Stop it, Kane. Please, no. Ah. So it's gone. It hurts me too, Lord. Hurts, yes. Some power returns to me simply by being here. But I place too much of myself in the tools, and they are gone. Stolen. Lost to me. The three in one know much. Earth for Thondi and Scold. If you are strong enough to summon her... Yes, yes, I will call them. Leave me, Lucian. The dream world, the dream time, the unconscious, call it what you will, is as much a part of me as I am of it. And for the first time since my return, for the first time in 70 years, I reach out my substance, and I shape the world. The crossroad comes from a Cambodian farmer, that farmer uh, from his dreams of a new ox cart. The gallows comes from a young Japanese movie buff, her head roiling from a surfeit of old hammer horror, from a surfeit of old hammer horror films. The honey, the snakes, the crescent moon, all these are easy to find. A black she-lamb is more difficult, but one dances in the dreams of a child in Adelaide, Australia. I take it to set the scene. Still, the set is incomplete. Clotho, Lachesis, and Ultrapos would come for less than this, but I need a boon, and the three are fickle. Dully the church bells echo and clang in the lovely darkness twelve times. Dong, 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 dong. You get it. There, it's midnight. The witching hour. And they come. The one who is three. The we who are they. The Hecate. The, I think it was the Hecate. Yeah, the Hecate. That's right. Welcome, ladies. You look so thin, my darling. You haven't been eating properly, have you now? Morpheus, it's been a long time. Hey, you want something. Lady Atropos, you have found me out. I do want something. Atropos, no, not now. You might as well call me the Morrigan. She's right, my ducks. Might as well call us Tisiphone, Electo, and Megara. And that takes us back, eh? Might as well call us Deanna, Mary, and Florence. Ha ha. Uh, sorry. For me, you will always be the three graces, ladies. Flatterer. Oh, he's the clever one. So what should I call you? I'm Cynthia. She's Mildred. I'm Mordred. Stupid name. I ought to be more game. It wasn't my fault. I just got them confused, was all. Dweep, dweep. Witch Queen, you know of my imprisonment, of my travail, of the time that was stolen from me. They have stolen time from you? What of that? You have all the time there ever was. Squeak. They stole more than time. When I established this realm, I created tools to administer it. My tools are lost. I need help. Help! He... Listen to him. Did you help us against Cersei? Burp. It doesn't matter. This is my realm. It has laws. Old laws. And the beings in this world can... Uh, rather, and the beings in the world conform to the laws. Just as you three obey your own laws, could one of you exist apart from the other two? I need three answers. You are bound by the laws to give me them. Ay, me dearie, one answer then, one answer from each of us. Maiden, there was a pouch of sand. It was stolen from me. An Englishman, John Constantine, he was the last to purchase your pouch. He has it still? One question, one answer, the rules, my lord. I see. Then your question, all mother, my helm, what happened to it? Traded with a demon, my dove, many years ago, long gone from the mortal plane. Which demon? One question, my honeysuckle, and one answer. Crone, a final question for you. My stone, my dreamstone, my ruby moonstone. Who has that now? He, your gem, passed through a mother to a son who tapped its dream magics for his own ends, until it and his dreams were taken away from him by the superhumans. Ask the League of Justice about its present whereabouts. Oh, wow. So there was Batman and stuff in the original. We didn't get that in Netflix, folks. I'm, I'm sorry.
It didn't happen. There's no Batman, no Green Lantern. Sorry, guys. But where? No. One answer only I know. Thank you, weird sisters. Ha 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 ha. Do you hear that, my sister self? Oh ho oh, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. Thank you, she says. You don't think the fate's drinking. Ha 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 ha. Hey, we haven't helped you. Your troubles are only just beginning. Exhaustion bites at my soul. I have answers of a sort. This will be an uphill quest. Abel had been dead for a couple of hours now, but he's starting to feel better. Ugh. He feels splintered vertebrae grind as he climbs. Even the pain feels better than the cold of death. It's a long way back up. So, much has changed. Much is strange on Earth since I was ripped from my dream home. What first? I doubt I'm strong enough to go against, up against the hordes of hell. Not yet. To Earth, then. The ruby first or the pouch? There are things I do not know about this Justice League, more than mere humans, eh? The Englishman, then. John Constantine. He has the poucher. He knows where it is. And he is just a man. I will visit Constantine, regain my pouch, and when the pou with the pouch I will have the power to dare the gates of hell itself. He is, after all, just a human. Just one human. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, I'll tell you a story, Goldie. I'm uh, calling you Goldie after a friend of mine who went away, but I'll think of you as Irving, really. Arrgh! In my heart. It's a secret story. It's a story of two brothers, and they, uh, they loved each other very much, and they were always nice to each other. Nice and kind and brotherly. And the elder brother would never hurt the younger brother. Never. And they lived together in the same house. And they were, uh, they they were uh, very happy. I'm sorry. I wasn't. I'm not crying. I'm really not crying. It's only blood, little brother. Only blood. Next. Dream a little dream of me. All this is very well adapted in the Netflix. It was almost word for word. One, two, three, four. Her nipples are hard and dark and shrunken on breasts like empty pouches. Her hair comes out in clumps when she moves. She tries not to move too much. Her skin is flaking, infected and inflamed. Bed sores cover her back and legs. 28, 29, 30. Her fingernails grew long and brittle, then they broke off. The ragged nails rip her skin when she scratches. Her stomach shrank, then bloated, then it shrank again. Hunger subsided to a low nagging in the back of her mind. It's okay, it goes away. Like the pain goes away, like everything goes away when the dreams come. She feels reality ebbing back. Delay the pleasure. Delay the dreams. Will she dissolve it in her mouth? Breathe it in? I'm no, sorry. Breathe it? Rub it into her skin? No, it doesn't matter. Hold on. Hold on. 65, 66. She'll wait. Okay. I see that. It doesn't matter. She's counting to 100. 96. 97. 98. Bzzz, click. For all you crumblies out there, here's one from the vaults. A real rave from the grave. Count 99 and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. Birds singing in the sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of me. Cough. <clears throat> Have you had one of those days where something just seems to be trying to tell you somebody? There was a smell of magic somewhere, like the blue spark smell of ozone in a fun fair. I just had this nightmare. These things with faces, like appendectomy scars, were, cross were crocheting my intestines into body bags for the blind and dead. Blast from the past, oldie but goodie, the man with the magic. I told myself it was only a dream, but it didn't matter. The bastards just kept on bloody knitting. Mr. Sandman, I'm so alone. Oh, Mr. Sandman, I'm so alone. Ain't got nobody. Click. Hello, London. Hello, John Constantine. How are you then, London? All right, full of people, raining. You? Oh, not bad. It's almost lunchtime, so I'm headed into town for breakfast. Good idea, John. Thank you, London. Morning, Lay. Give us a cheeseburger and two mugs of coffee. It's going to be a long day. And give us some five pence pieces for the jukebox. What are you putting on? What are you putting on? I heard it through the grapevine. Used to sing it with mucous membrane ages ago. Practically my theme song. Sweet dreams of you every night I go through. Yeah. 
You gotta learn to press the right buttons, John. The whole night through, instead of having sweet dreams all about you. Something trying to tell me somebody? Somebody trying to tell you something? Yup. Womp. I think it's your girlfriend outside. He he. Womp. Jesus, Mad Hetty. He's back, John. Who's back, Eddie? Who, uh, who's back, Mad Hetty? You ought to know, smart boy, Morpheus, the owner of the Oneromancer. You know, the Sandman, he's back. The Sandman, Mad Hetty, you've got to be pulling my leg. Cheeky young jackanapes. Look, the Sandman's a fairy story. You tell kids to get them off to sleep, sprinkles magic dust in your eyes, and brings you sweet dreams. I'm trying to save the world, Mad Hetty, and you want to tell me fairy stories? Now you listen to me, John Constantine, you little prick. I said the Sandman, and I mean the bleeding Sandman. He's back, John. He wants his own. I know. I'm 247 years old, and I know. He's back. Funny thing is, she is 247. A Sandman, eh? Suppose I'll have to look into it. He left the Porsche a half a mile back down the road. Hopes it won't get stolen. There's some real thieves around these days. They call themselves creepers. It's a sport. Breaking into people's houses while they're still at home. During the day, it's an investment counselor. Checkbooks, credit cards, CDs, videotapes. He thinks of it as his contribution to the free market economy. And he, 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 he must be dreaming. He can feel the warm tightness of her skin. The scent of sex is heavy in the air. The lips taste of roses and passion. And she holds him like her life depends on it. This is too good. Too good to be true. He's sitting 150 in the Lamborghini of his dreams. Everybody's green with envy. The acceleration goes on forever. Jesus, he's dying for them and they love him. He's pure and perfect. He's dying for their sins. He can see his parents, his boss, his lovers in the crowd below him. They're sorry now. Sorry they treated him so badly. Because he's the son. Last son of a dead planet. Strongest man in the world. He can do anything. Anything. Absolutely anything. For the next few days, I keep meaning to investigate this Sandman stuff. I just never quite get round to it. My own researches keep me busy enough. Oh, oh, sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? Well, there's the Manson version, too. Like One thing I've learned, you can know anything. It's all there. You just have to find it. To call my own, I want a dream lover so I don't have to dream alone. Oh, oh yeah, I know that. So, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. I know how that one goes. John Constantine, I presume. Dreams are like angels. They keep bad at bay. I dream a mess of ley lines and leptons, plasma fields and turf giants. Then the dreams get scary and bad, as per usual. It was on the third day that he caught up with me. Oh, there we are. And then he says, John Constantine, I presume. Okay. A little bit, you know, not perfect. Well, I'm not Dr. Livingstone, pal. Heh. <laughs> Sorry, little joke. Very little. I suppose you must be... Something of mine came into your possession. A leather pouch full of sand. I want it back. Where is it? That pouch? That was years ago. Yeah, I bought it in a garage sale in San Francisco. I knew it was powerful, but I never even managed to get the drawstrings open. Where is it now? I haven't seen it for ages, but the odds are it's down in Chad's lockup with me stuff from Paddington and from the Notting Hill Palace, Palace rather, and the East Croydon flat before that. Let us retrieve it then. I hope you don't expect me to go on public transport with you dressed like that. Be dead embarrassing. Is this better? Ah, I'd introduce you to the big green bloke. You'd like him. He hasn't got a sense of humor either. We have been looking for two hours, Constantine. Patience wears thin. I do not believe it is here. If it were here, I would be able to feel it. We still got a load of stuff to go through yet, boss. Keep smiling. It'll turn up. How'd you lose this pouch, anyway? It was stolen from me by a man called Burgess. The old demon king himself, eh? Ruharia, the Plant Elemental, Crisis, American Gothic, Liverpool, and Tibet. You must be older than you look. Damn. I don't know why I hang on to all this stuff. If there's a fire, it'd be like my whole life was going up in flames. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Bloody hell. Uh, boss, I think I know where your pouch is. 
Uh, John, can we take a stop at a service station? I'm parched. I took off without me tea. You heard the man, Cass, old mate. Sorry, I ain't no mark for the Venus of hard sell. I know I owe you, John, but this is pushing it. Drive us, Mr. Chass. You will be rewarded. Uh, it's just Chass, Mr. Uh, John? What do I call him? You don't call him. He just kind just turn up out of the blue. They call you. Everyone shuts up and Cass jolts us up the motorway. Our visitor melts into the backseat shadows. And I remember Rachel. Amazing Rachel. Chunky Rachel. We were living together in a high-rise flat in East Croydon. I went to Alaska for six months over the lupus affair. When I got back, she was gone. Loaned me me stereo, the telly, me silver surfers, any old joke she could convert to money. And she long since converted the money into junk, stupid bitch. Either one of you gents mind if I put on the radio? No? Sometimes I still miss her. I wish I'd realized that she'd nick the pouch as well, though. The candy-colored man, clown, they call the Sandman, tiptoes through my room every night just to sprinkle stardust. I'm not even familiar with that. Candy-colored clown. Yeah, right. Right, this is it, the Brambles. We'll ask her dad where she's living in these days and go find her. No problems, eh? Her dad's all right. Retired air pilot. Nice man. We'll get your bag back. The pouch is here. How do you know? I know. The pouch is here. And more than the pouch. This house is dangerous, Constantine. Chas, stay in the car. Roll up the windows. Lock the doors. But John, you take off at the first sign of trouble, all right? No buts, mate. Your missus hates me as it is. Let's not give her a reason to, eh? Rachel was always playing with the pouch. Kept going on at me to try to open it. She'd ask me, what's the point of having something magic if you don't use it? I knew the answer. But I knew she'd never understand. Well, there's no answer, and it's locked, bolted, and alarmed. Let's go around the back. We can smash a window, get in that way. No, we go in by the front door. Creak. It smells strange. Uh, it smells strange. Part of it reminds me of the month I worked for an undertaker. All flesh and formaldehyde. It's weird. It smells are a hotline to memory. Constantine, this place is not safe for you. Things are free in this house that should not be loose on earth. You must not stay here. No, I'll stick around. I'm intrigued. Anyway, I was fond of Rachel once. She was, you know, the girl in my dreams for a while. The electricity's cut off. There's six months worth of mail on the doormat. What's been happening here? Watch out for the human. What do you mean, watch out for the... Ah, the dump! Human. Yes, is he... He's alive, after a fashion. What happened to him? He's being eaten by dreams. You need light. Is that better? Uh, sure, thanks. I've been out of my depth before. Something tells me they, there are sharks in these depths. I ought to be running away, but... Rachel. Movies. Old dark house. Horrible menace on the loose. Let's split up. Muffled screams in darkness. Uh, we'll stick together, won't we? Of course. Unthinking, I reach for the light switch. Yeah, Christ. There's something on the walls. Something wet and... and and I can see the clouds. They look kind of solid. And the ground below them. That looks really solid. It's a long way to fall. And I'm falling. How did I get here? Memory fills in the plane on fire. I jumped. I was the pilot? No. A passenger then. I don't want to die. I don't want to fall. I tell myself. It's not the falling. Falling doesn't hurt. It's when you stop. Constantine. Yeah. John. You're here. Ah, so real. You were there too. A dream. It was only a dream. It is never only a dream, John Constantine. Here, less than some other places, more light. Jesus, what is this stuff? A human body. What's left of it? Your woman's father, I would surmise. But it's still alive. That's right. I feel sick. I can feel the hot dog and coffee I grabbed for dinner trying to fight their way back up for air. How? The pouch. Leave here. Do not disturb. Leave her. Leave the woman. She is ours. The woman? Rachel? She's through here. Do not disturb us. Do not disturb her. Always from hungry. We from hungry. I don't care who you buddy are. We want to see Rachel. Foolish. Foolish. Here at posture. Here at threaten. Fairly foolish. Foolish meat things. Let us through. Who said? Who spoke? Not him. Never him. He's gone. All gone. Long gone. This has gone far enough. 
you have exceeded your bounds. Master. Master, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do not chastise, destroy. Sorry, Master. We thought you were all gone. Yes, yes. Dreams, right? Right. And you're really their master? Yes, thought so. I don't want to think about the smell in here. Para drops ketones. Sores, morgues, garbage, hell. Hello? Alive. She's alive. Rachel? John, is that you? I've had such a wonderful dream. Dream, dream, dream. Whenever I want to. All I have to do is dream. Jesus. Rachel. Jesus. I have the pouch. The dreams will return to their proper location in time. We can go now. The bag. Uh, my bag, but it's not my bag. It hurts. You can't leave her like this. See the sun set in the hand of the man. Why not? Her metabolism is obviously destroyed. The same is the only thing keeping her alive. She will die soon. Painfully, I would imagine. I said you can't bloody leave her like this. Ugh. Ugh. Very well, Constantine. Go outside. But, yeah, all right. Rachel, sweet dreams, love. The veil tears, and she feels the flesh flow back onto her bones again. And she knows he's waiting for her. John. Oh, sorry. John. Hello, love. It's been a long time. Did you miss me then? Nah. Bastard. Love ya. I know. It's the best of all possible worlds. Well, she's dead. Did she? She died peacefully. She died happy. You've got your sodden sandbag then. You've got your sodden sandbag back then. So, where are you going now? Oh, oh he said, yeah, great, thanks. Mm -mm. To hell. Yeah, aren't we all, mate? Aren't we all? I'll go wake Chas up and take off back to the smoke then. Got work to do, eh? I'll see ya. Goodbye, Constantine. Hey, hang on. Wait a minute, please? Yes. Well, all right, I don't like to ask for favors if they don't owe me something. I mean, I don't want to be in anyone's debt. It's just, what are you asking, John Constantine? It's just, ever since Newcastle, the last ten years, ever since Newcastle, I've been having these nightmares, bad ones most nights, and I wondered if you could... I understand. Very well. Thanks. A one, two, three... Four, Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Make her the cutest that I've ever seen. Give her the word that I'm not a rover. Then tell me that my lonesome life is over. Next, going to hell. This is almost exactly like the Netflix. I mean, of course, those of you who saw the Netflix, they changed it up quite a bit. Um... You know, Joanna Constantine, lesbian girlfriend. Very similar script, but they definitely changed a couple of things. You know, it is what it is. Okay, so this is where we end it for now. And I know you guys are enjoying The Sandman. I am too. Great comic. Just wonderfully written. Love doing the voices. And, uh... We'll do more Sandman, don't worry. There's there's more Comic Corner shows coming up. You know, we'll we'll definitely get through it. It's a long way to go, but we'll get through it. At any rate, this is the Grim Lord and I'm out for Grim's Comic Corner with the Sandman.